All right, here we go, everybody. Thursday, May 24th. So, we had another episode today of Trade War Jitters. Market closed down a little over 1%. It was down more than that during the day, but it closed down a little bit over 1%. Now, as you know, I have been a skeptic about the economic impact of the so-called trade war. Not that it's not going to have an impact, it will have some impact, but uh, the degree to which investors think, and not only investors, you, you see it in, in media, commentary, even economists, the degree to which they are um, describing this, the impact, is really bordering on recessionary, if not worse. I mean, they are really creating a very dark outlook from the trade, so-called trade war. And I am a skeptic on that. In the past, I have gone through the numbers. I think I made several videos, actually, where I broke down the numbers, the impact of GDP, when you look at the export-import relationship between the United States and China. Now, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But you may recall in November and December when we got that first round of actually uh, tariffs and, and trade war fears and the market sold off dramatically in that time, uh, I told you that that was a simple market correction. Not a simple, but that was a market correction and you had to buy into that. And that was obviously the correct thing to do. We went to new all-time highs after that, which I said was going to happen. And in the midst of that panic, which is what it was, that was a, a market panic last November and December, it's not like I was just saying, hey, you gotta buy because uh, you gotta buy every time it goes down. No, I was putting out the data and I was putting out the numbers. The fiscal flows, the fiscal support, government spending, the bank credit, which was not only rising but accelerating at that time. And the interesting thing, if I could just focus on that bank credit for, for a minute, um, in the period I would say probably from May of 2018, May, June, probably into September, October, bank credit was decelerating. You could see the slowdown in the growth rate of bank credit. So it kind of um, forecasted, it kind of tipped us off that the economy was vulnerable to a slowdown. Certainly the market could have been vulnerable at that time to a sell-off. And that's what happened. But during the November-December period, there was a very significant reacceleration in bank credit, loans and leases, banks buying securities, all that kind of stuff. So, and I talked about that. I talked about that as it was happening. We had one joker on here post up a comment saying, "Oh, Mike, you only talk about, you only make videos when the market goes up." No, I make them every single day regardless of what's happening and go back to that period of November, December, go look at my videos. I was talking about this, not just that you ought to buy that correction, but I said, here's what's going on. You have major, major record-breaking fiscal support and you had a significant acceleration in bank credit at that time. Those are the numbers that I look at. So right now, Pretty much the same thing. Uh, we are uh, from uh, the fiscal flow analysis. That is basically off the charts. We are in record territory, and I will, you know, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. It is extremely hard for me, at least, to call any kind of a major economic slowdown, and certainly to call a recession when you have massive, massive fiscal support. This is classic MMT, folks. This is what the whole you know, uh, um, argument and, and rage is going on out there in commentary in the media about MMT. This, this is MMT in practice. You have massive fiscal support. And if that were not the case, then I'm sure the economy would be in recession. 
sorry, but that is the case. And there is no sign of a let up in that. And then the banking data is very important because that is where, that's the creation of credit, that is loans and leases, that is banks themselves buying assets, that is banks growing their capital. And their capital is the only thing which constrains their ability to lend. It's not the reserves in the system. As a matter of fact, and I've been all through this, and it's, it's the one thing that I focus on that nobody else talks about, is how the central banks, in their you know, crazy zeal to just inundate banking systems all over the world with reserves, thinking like, oh, they lend out the reserves. No, that just clogs up their balance sheets and it actually causes them to pull back on their ability to make loans because it screws with their leverage ratios, which is something they have to adhere to. So anyway, you had a 1% correction today. We are bottoming out here, all right? It's a process and it's also tied to these reserve flows, these bank reserve flows that I have been telling you about. Now, I'm the only one who really understands this, who has delved into this on a level that you will not find anywhere else. If you want to learn about this, if you want to become informed, if you want to educate yourself, a lot of people say, oh, you know, Mike, I can't use your information, da 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 da, da. well, that, and I've said this in the past, that's the same thing as saying, I want to stay uninformed. I want to stay ignorant. I want to have less knowledge. I want to do what everybody else does, even if that's wrong, because at least I could say, hey, look, they did it too. How can you, you know, how can you knock me when everybody else was wrong as well? So yeah, if you are of that mentality, whether you realize it or not, then yeah, you cannot use my information because my information means elevating you with more knowledge, with more understanding, with more insight. You don't want that. But if you're not one of those people and you do want that and you want to gain more insight and more knowledge and educate yourself and be ahead of the crowd, go to my website, pitbulleconomics.com and sign up for a 30-day free trial of MMT Trader. Judge for yourself. I mean, you could still stick. Ultimately, you could end up still staying with your approach, which is guessing. That's fine. And anyone who says, and I've had this, I've had this debate or conversation with many people saying, well, you know what? I don't need the big picture because I'm a, I'm a bottom-up investor. <laughs> I just have to laugh at that. Because even if you are a bottom-up investor, what does that mean? It's like a guy who goes in there and looks at the financials of a company and determines, you know, hey, that company has a great financial position, it's making money, has low debt, etc. cetera. Uh, that's a great investment. But if basic conditions are not good, I don't care how good that company is from a, a financial perspective, if basic economic conditions are no good, it's not going to do very much, and vice versa. If basic economic conditions are great, then that's the tide that floats all boats. Now, some are obviously going to do better than others, and that's where your bottom-up approach combined with that macro really, really helps you really puts you ahead of everybody else when it comes to this game. And vice versa, if you understand that the macro conditions, that basic conditions are deteriorating or bad, that's when you sell. Some people may think, oh, Mike, you're just a permable. You never sell. No, that's not true. If the time comes when I see those conditions start to contract or go away or deteriorate, Fiscal support goes away. Maybe they try to balance the budget. Maybe they do massive spending cuts. I'll be the first one out there saying you got to sell. But why do you think everybody sells now into the hole and loses money? You know how many subscribers I had who bailed out in November, December? Your thing doesn't work. Yes, it works fine. You have no control over your emotions. You have no patience. And when things get a little tough, what happens? They run. There's always going to be people like that. And there's going to be way more people like that than the ones who have self-discipline and self-control and the ability 
to face adversity and rise above it. That inner strength, that grit. And I teach that. So anyway, that was today. We're in the, uh, the bottom of this corrective process. The market's going to go make new all-time highs because conditions are still there. Sorry. I mean, that, that is the simplest way for me to state it. All right, everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.